So I remember I said, listen, I said, then I better not get arrested. So I go in the police department. I fill out the police report. The detective talks to the, his lieutenant. He comes back. He tells me, asked me to wait in the hallway. He didn't want to leave me in his cube. They like cubicles. And he didn't want to leave me in the cube. He goes, can you wait? I can't leave you here. Can you wait in the hallway? Sure. So I stand in the hallway and there's all these wanted posters on the wall. My Secret Service most wanted, my Secret Service poster was on the wall. The only color poster. I was like, fuck. So he comes up. He sees like, hey, I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and I'm not going to detain you any longer. He, he did talk. I think he said he did talk to the district attorney and she's looking into it. He goes, do me a favor. Don't go anywhere. I said, I own two houses here. Where am I going to go? I work here. And he's like, okay, okay, yeah. So I get my car. I, Becky's calling. She, I'm like, she, I'm like, hey, what's up? And, you know, I'm like, what the? I remember I got on the phone. I was like, you fucking bitch. <laughs> um, and she's like, oh, no, I was on my way. I was coming. I was just trying to get you to get on the interstate. It's like, so I remember I drive right from there. I drove straight to, I drove straight to the bank and got out another nine grand. I went to another bank and got out another eight or nine grand. Went to another bank and then the women that were there, I could tell they they tried to like grab the phone. They went for the phone and picked it up when I walked in, turned around, got in my car and left. Drove to, uh, where did I go? Yeah, you know what you know, I was going to say? You know what's upsetting is that the satisfaction of loans, I signed one of them I ended up signing. Do uh, you ever watch The Simpsons? Occasionally. Yeah. I watch, I signed like uh, C. Montgomery Burns, which is the aging tycoon, you know, the guy that owns the power plant. So that didn't, you know, I thought I was cute. It, it wasn't cute. When I got in front of the judge, he didn't think it was cute at all. So anyway, what ended up happening was we, I drove to meet Becky. By then we'd relocated to Houston, Texas. So I go to Houston. I meet her. We get into this huge argument because I'm furious that she was going to leave me. We get into this huge argument. I tell her I want to split the money because it's like 600000 I left over – I left like 600000 in the banks. So, yeah, that was hard to walk away from. So <clears throat> we argue. She says, look, you know, she's telling me she's going to call the police. Like, I'm not giving you – she's like, I'll give you like 10 grand. I'm like, 10 grand? You know, she, she goes, yeah. And I said, no, no, we're, we need to split it up. We start arguing. I told her, look, we, you don't come up with a fair number. I said, I say 300000 each. She goes, no. She goes, you'll go steal some more money. I can't do it. She goes, I can't do what you do. And I was like, okay, so how about this? I said, uh, you know, come up with something reasonable. I said, I'm going to take it all. And she goes, she goes, you take it all. She said, I'll call the police. And they'll, they'll grab you. You know, so she ends up giving me $100,000 of the money that I rightfully stole. So that's my, I mean, I know what you're thinking, but that's my money. So I get 100000 I go to Char back to Charlotte to get my car. So I remember I got my car, drove down. It was a parking lot. We lived in the middle of downtown. Drove down, went to a Starbucks. And when I was at the Starbucks, um, I walk in there and I, I order a coffee and I'm waiting for the barista to, to make the coffee. And there were two employees from my apartment complex. Oh, you know what I, I, I didn't mention? This is, this is so stupid. I don't even know why this is bad. Look, on my way to Charlotte, I actually called the FBI agent. That was looking for me. I only called her. It seems cocky. I know it seems arrogant, but I only called her because I called home to talk to my ex-wife and talk to my mom. And I called a friend of mine, one of my old brokers, and she said, look, I talked to the FBI agent. You know, everybody had already been interviewed. They'd all they were all ready to cooperate against me. So she said, I talked to her. She wants you to call. She has to call her. And I went, are you fucking? I said, no, I don't think so. She goes, no, call her. Maybe you can turn yourself in. Maybe you can work something out. So I said, okay. 
you know, she's like, it can't hurt. So I call, she gives me, she gives me the phone number and I call the phone number and the woman's name was an FBI agent, Candace Calderon. This was, this is a, this is a rough chick. Um, she's n not a fan. So she, uh, I call her, I talk to her. She, um, so she's real cocky on the phone. You know, I said, hey, this is Matt Cox. I understand you wanted me to call you. And she's like, yeah, hey, Mr. Cox. She's like, uh, I'd like for you to turn yourself in. I go, eh, that's not going to happen. And she goes, okay. She, I said, well, what, what else can I do for you? And she goes, well, let's talk about you turning yourself in. She said, I said, well, how much time am I, what, what, how much time am I looking at if I turn myself in? She goes, well, that's not how it works. The way it works is you turn yourself in and then we determine how much you know, what, what, what we're going to consider it, how much we're going to take off your sentence for turning yourself in. I went, no, nah, I'm not doing that. That's stupid. I said, I, 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 I need to know up front. She goes, well, let me call the U.S. attorney. Well, no, first she, what she said was she kept calling me sweetie. It's fucking pissed me off. She's like, listen, sweetie. She goes, you're going to get caught eventually. I said, oh, yeah. She's like, yeah. She goes, let me explain something. She goes, we're not, I remember she goes, we're 90% sure of where you're at. I go, yeah, well, only 100% counts, sweetie. And she goes, listen, she goes, you're going to, she goes, you're going to fuck up eventually. She goes, eventually you're going to go home. Somebody will recognize you. She goes, or you will, she goes, uh, she goes, or somebody will, somebody will wreck it. Somebody, some police officer will recognize you or something will happen and you'll, you're going to get pulled over by the police and they'll, they'll figure out who you are and arrest you. And she goes, you're going to get caught eventually. I said, yeah, I said, she says, we almost know, we basically almost know where we, we're going to catch you. And I said, what's, what's taking so long? I said, first of all, I said, I've been pulled over by the police. I said, I've gotten multiple tickets in other people's names. I've been, I even went to traffic school as somebody else. <laughs> I said, I've got a dozen passports. I've been in and out of the country as other people. I said, I've had plastic surgery. Bro, I've had my nose done. I had hair transplants. I had a fucking, I had a, a what's called a mini facelift. I had liposuction. I've had everything. If you look at the pictures of me before and you look at me now, vastly different. So I say, yeah, that's, that's, I said, that's not going to happen. I said, I'm not going back to Tampa and nobody's going to recognize me. And she goes, you are a cocky shit, aren't you? <laughs> We're like back and forth, bro. So anyway, she says, I'll call the U.S. attorney and I'm going to find out what, what I can do for you. I said, okay. So she goes, call me back. No, she, she goes, I'll call you back. What's the phone number? You're, what, what phone number are you calling from? And I went, oh. <laughs> I said, no, I said, you're probably triangulating this or something. And I remember she goes, she goes, get over yourself. She goes, you're not that important. And I remember thinking, I was like embarrassed. I remember being like, yeah, who, I'm nobody. Who, who do I think I am? There, and then, but for some reason I went, nah, I'll call you back. And I shut off my phone. So I found out later when I ordered something called the Freedom of Information Act, and it gives you all the documents in your case, that she actually hung up the phone and called the U.S. Marshals, and they dispatched. They couldn't track the phone, but they tracked it back to where it had been sold. So two marshals jumped in a car and were driving towards the location of where I was. So I call her back like an hour later. I go and I get in, in the truck. I was driving a U-Haul truck because I had moved my stuff to Houston and my car was in Charlotte. So I drive, get in the truck and I'm driving. And she calls me back and she's like, okay, listen, I talked to him seven years. And I went, seven years. She goes, seven years. Turn yourself in in Tampa. Come back to Tampa. I can get you seven years. I was like, nah, I don't. I don't know about seven years. Seems excessive. I said, I'm thinking maybe two or three years. And she's like, you know, uh, and she's like, well, no, I can't do that. I don't know that I can do that. I said, well, you need to figure it out. I said, does that, and I said, why don't I turn myself in in Atlanta? And she goes, no, you have to turn yourself in in Tampa. And I went, well, Atlanta's closer to me where I'm at. No, no, you turn yourself in Tampa. And I went, well, what did the Atlanta U.S. attorney said, say? And she went, turn, make sure you, you don't go to Atlanta, go, to, go here because we want to be able to interview you and this. And I went, okay. I said, I, I understand. I said, but first of all, I said, I don't know that seven, I'm going to take seven years. Secondly, I said, what did the U.S. attorney in Atlanta say? 
because they, they still don't know about South Carolina. So I'm trying to get it all you know, uh, put to, into one case. And so she, she dodges the question three or four times. Finally, I go, I've asked you three fucking times. And you keep not answering. What did the Atlanta U.S. attorney say? You're talking to the Tampa one. What did Atlanta say? She goes, well, I don't know. I go, how much time do I have to do in Atlanta? It's all included, right? And she's like, well, I don't know. You have to take that up with Atlanta. I said, oh, hell no. You're telling me that seven years just for Tampa? What about that? That ended up being $11.5 million. What are they going to do in Atlanta? And what are they going to do when they find out about the $1.3 million? That's another almost $2 million. After, while I'm on the run, it's not good. So I, she said, I said, oh, man, you almost had me there. And she goes, look, I can call them. I said, man, lady, I wouldn't believe you if you told me water was wet. And I, I fucking chucked the phone out because I figured I'm doing at least 14 or 15 years now, uh, at least. Plus, I was on probation. They, they have a real issue with you being on probation, committing additional crimes. Now they really hammer you. So I'm fucked. So I drive back to South Carolina. I get my car. I drive down the parking garage. I go to the Starbucks across the street. From, it's like catty corner. It's like a block or two, a block and a half away from my apartment complex. So I park my car right out front. I go in. I'm waiting for my coffee. There's two people from the apartment complex. And so they're looking at me real weird. Like, what? And I keep, they keep looking at me. They have this, like, this little argument between them, this little discussion. And then the female uh, employee from the apartment complex leaves. And the guy standing there holding like the tray of coffee, staring at me. So I get my coffee. I go in, I get my car, start my car. He comes out and he's standing on the, on the sidewalk, just staring at me. And I remember thinking it was like the fourth and my rent was due on the first and I hadn't paid my rent because I'd been driving around. I hadn't been there. So I thought it had something to do with my rent being late. I start my car. I'm looking about to pull out, and he starts screaming on the sidewalk. He's right there. He's right there. Turns out that the U.S. Marshals had been at the apartment complex interviewing everybody, and the female agent ran back to get him, and then they were running at – They were. I look at my rearview mirror. They're probably th two or 300 feet behind me running, and I just punched it and fucking hauled ass. I mean, you know, it's probably it probably sounds more giraffe than it was. I mean, I was lucky. I was already in the car. I'm already started. But I mean, fuck, they were right there. Like if I hadn't have been this guy had really honestly, they probably would have grabbed me if he hadn't screamed. So I have no IDs, no driver's licenses, nothing. Because Be all Becky had them all. The only one I have is a guy named Michael Eckert. And I, I can't use Michael Eckert because the they know about Michael Eckert because they just went to his apartment. The, the car I was driving was in Michael Eckert's name. The police officer in South Carolina had seen it and took the tag number down. So I drive immediately to a homeless facility and I survey a bunch of guys and I get three or four different <laughs> fucking things, uh, their information. I then drive this car that they're now looking for. I drive to Tennessee. And that's like a six hour drive, drive all the way to Tennessee. I then order all these guys information. So I get their information. I go get a driver's license in the name, uh, Joseph Carter. So, and I end up being Carter. I then take that car and I drive the car all the way back to South Car to, to North Carolina. And I park the car in a long-term parking. I get on a plane. I fly back to Tennessee. I go get a, I, I of course, I get, I've got a driver's license. I go get a new car, order the credit cards, put the, put money down, and start buying houses. I mean, I need some money. I don't have very much money. I got like a hundred grand. So I, in, in Nashville, I borrow 3.5 million. Same thing. I buy a bunch of cheap houses. I record the values. I buy them in other people's names, record the values, pull out money, get about $3.5 million. 
and I was dating this girl named uh, Amanda. Gosh, she was amazing looking. So I'm dating this chick, and she, we end up moving in together. And we end up seeing another girl. So this other chick's coming over a couple times a week, right? And, uh, well, that girl, although I like to think she liked me, she definitely liked Amanda. And at some point, I, we found out that, keep in mind, this whole time, there are multiple newspaper articles coming out. The Chicago Tribune, Tampa Times, Tampa Tribune, St. Petersburg Times. Um, uh, I was in a Bloom, a Bloomberg Business Week, Fortune Magazine. I mean, so this is it's getting crazy, and I'm still committing crimes. <laughs> so, what ends up happening is we find out Dateline is going to come out. You know, Dateline, NBC News. So they were coming out and they were doing a one-hour special on me. So that's not good. It was the first time that it was like, okay, this is going to be national news. I may get recognized at this point. So what I end up doing is I decide I'm just going to cash out some of this money, get a couple million dollars, and I'm, I'm going to go to Australia because I'd researched Australia. With, it would allow you to come and you could become a permanent resident alien, and you didn't actually have to get fingerprinted at that time. They'd let you buy houses. So you couldn't get a job. But you could start your own business if you showed up with like $100,000. So it was perfect. So I could show up with a fake ID or a driver's license in a homeless guy's name. I could become a permanent resident alien. and I never have to get fingerprinted. Not that I don't think I could figure out how to get around that. But it just seemed like uh, – seemed you know, doable. So what happens is we're cashing checks, and at some point my girlfriend, Amanda – tells the other girl that we were sleeping with who I am. She contacts the Secret Service. Secret Service sets up a surveillance, and long story short is they grab me. They end up arresting me. I get, uh, oh, and Becky had gotten arrested too. Remember I told you I took the money and left? She'd been arrested already. So she'd already cooperated against me. Everybody cooperated against me. So anyway, I ended up getting uh, – I get grabbed. When I get grabbed, the U.S. attorney, you know, they come to me and they say, look uh, – well, first I get a public defender because, of course, they don't let you keep your money. How, how did they grab you first? Uh, how they grabbed me? Oh, yeah, well, what did they get you at? Oh, pulling into my house. Like we'd had a, a robbery, and I'd gotten the robbery on film. So they called me to say, hey, can you meet us at your house? This is the local police. You know, I have no problem with having interaction with law enforcement because I, I always had valid driver's licenses, valid passports. I had just come back from – I'd just gone to – in the last month or so, I'd gone to Greece. I'd gone to Italy, and we'd gone to Croatia. So, you know, we'd just flown back in like a month. So I'm, I'm no problem. I've got all the correct identification. So they call me up and they say, hey, can you meet me at the meet us at the house? We want to get the video of this burglary that happened. It was a home invasion. But, you know, yeah, they kicked in the door. It was a whole fucking thing. But I don't I don't want you know, I'm, I'm skipping parts of the story because. Um, so they call up and say, will you come, you know, meet us there? And I was like, sure, no problem. Well, that had been orchestrated by the Secret Service and Trina. The, the girl that we were sleeping, I was sleeping with. So we go, I, I pull in, and when I pull in, I'm talking to Amanda on the phone, and she's saying, look, Trina called me. I, I think she might have done something. And I go, well, what do you mean? She doesn't know anything. She's like, I, I fucked up. I think I might have fucked up. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I'm getting out of the car, and as soon as I get out of the car, you know, this fucking, these cars come pulling in. They, they jump out. They've got the guns. They're screaming, you know, get on the ground, get on the ground. They got the these black – they're all in black with these vests, and it says Secret Service, and they scream at me to get on the ground, and I'm just you – know, I'm just – I went numb. I didn't get on the ground. What's so funny is I just stood there. I was like, you know, looking around, 
And the guy actually walks all the way up to me and then he holsters his gun and puts his hand on my shoulder and says, get on the ground. And I went, oh, shit, I'm sorry, bro. There were so many of them yelling and I just went totally numb. So I lay on the ground. I get up. They come over to me. The guy says, uh, is it him? There's like four, like three or four agents around me now. They're holding up my, my wanted poster. They're like, is it him? And one guy says, no, nah, it's not him. That's not him. Fuck. And the other guy goes, no, it's him. It's him. Nah, look at his eyes. That's him. And he goes, he goes, hey, how you doing, Mr. Cox? He goes, we've been looking for you. And I was like, he's like, you are Matt Cox, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, what am I going to, I know I'm done. It's over. Keep in mind, too, when they, they like, they, I, I've got a passport in the name of somebody else. I've got, I'm just, it's over. So they, they end up transporting me from Nashville, Tennessee to Atlanta, Georgia. And when I'm in Atlanta, they give me a, you know, you don't have any money. They, they've taken all my money. The first thing they do is strip all, the, all your money. Even if I had made legitimate money, they won't give you the legitimate money. You have to prove that it's legitimate money. Well, how am I? I'm in the middle. How I'm incarcerated. How am I going to prove anything? So they pull. They give me a, US, a, a public defender, federal public defender. A federal public defender says, "Listen, you got like." 15 or 20 co-defendants. All of them have cooperated against you. You're done. The, the U.S. Attorney's Office wants to talk to you. They're saying you've stolen over 50. Yeah, they said I'd, I forget what they said. Oh, they said I had over 50 bank, 50 victim banks. I'd stolen $26 million dollars. My mortgage company was responsible for $40 million in fraud. And look, I mean, the numbers are outrageous. It's like I've never seen $26 million. Maybe the mortgage company did $40 million. I never – they could never prove that. Pretty sure it probably did. But the point is <clears throat> then they come back. I said that's absolutely insane. Then they come back and that you know you start arguing. They wanted to charge me you know, with money laundering. They wanted to charge me. So we start arguing back and forth. I end up being charged with like bank fraud, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, wire fraud, government document fraud, social security fraud, passport fraud, aggravated identity theft. I'm mean, just a, a slew of shit. And it ends up we get it down to where basically I, I was responsible for 15 million in fraud and there was 9.5 million in loss. And I argued the 9.5 million in loss down to 6 million. And they basically they said, you know, here's here's what's here's what you do. This is my my you, my public defender's inf uh, her advice was cooperate, tell them everything they want to know, and hope for the best because everybody's cooperating against you. And it's not like I'm not guilty. So it's like just you go in, you just oh I I met with the Secret Service, met with the FBI. Met Candace Calderon in person. Not a nice person. Very, very uh, hostile. Um, I remember the uh, the Secret Service agent. When I got into the room with the Secret Service, two Secret Service agents, my lawyer and the U.S. attorney, he says, we want to talk to you about some of the money that you've hidden. And I went, I haven't hidden any money. He goes, we know you've hidden money. I went, I haven't hidden any money. What are you talking about? And he went, he said, we know you've hidden money. He pulls out some bank statements and he says, you've got $180,000 in the name of, of Walter Holcomb. Well, I'm Walter Holcomb. And, and, and I went, I looked at him and I, and then the bank were bank statements that I'd made. And I looked at him and I went, did you call the bank? He goes, yeah, I've called them. We just subpoenaed them. And I said, you subpoenaed them? And he goes, yeah. Keep in mind, I made the bank. It was an online bank at the website. I made the website. The phone number he called, he's leaving a message for someone to call him at the bank. That's my phone number. That's a voicemail. <laughs> so I'm like, so what did you think of the website? And he goes, what do you mean? It's a bank website. I said, yeah, but I mean, it was, it's professional. I mean, it's, it's, it was 
it's good, right? And he goes, he goes, it's a bank website. And I went, yeah, but it's professional done. It was very, very well done, don't you think? And he went, I mean, I go, I mean, it was convincing. And he goes, oh, son of a bitch. He goes, you made it, didn't you? And I go, it's all an illusion. I said, there's no fucking money. There's no bank. Who'd you subpoena? Like he subpoenaed the, a bank that used to be named that. I mean, it was just, I remember just kind of being like, I'm, I'm embarrassed you caught me.